Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So this is Pramod and this is another Comshare Security Plus real exam question series and this part is also very helpful to pass the Comshare Security Plus exam. So let's go to the questions. Which of the following should an internal auditor check for first when conducting an audit of the organization's risk management program? Option A, policies and procedures. Option B, asset management. Option C, vulnerability assessment. Option D, business impact analysis. And the correct answer for this question is option A, policies and procedures. So let's check the explanation. So when conducting an audit of an organization's risk management program, the internal auditor should first review the policies and procedures. These documents are foundational because they are outline the organization's approach, goals, roles and responsibilities for managing risk. Provide the documented framework against which actual practices such as asset management, vulnerability assessment and business impact analysis can be evaluated for compliance and effectiveness. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is, which of the following activities are associated with vulnerability management? Choose two out of these options. Option A, reporting. Option B, prioritizations. Option C, exploiting. Option D, correlation. Option E, containment. Option F, tabletop exercise. And the correct answer for this question is option A, reporting. And option B, prioritization. So let's check the explanation. So prioritization is the process of ranking vulnerabilities based on risks to determine which ones to address first, ensuring efficient allocation of resources. And reporting involves documenting, identify vulnerabilities, their severity and potential impact to inform stakeholders and track progress. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, an administrator wants to perform a risk assessment without using proprietary company information. Which of the following methods should the administrator use to gather information? Option A, network scanning. Option B, penetration testing. Option C, open source intelligence. Option D, configuration auditing. And the correct answer for this question is option C, open source intelligence. So let's check the explanation. So open source intelligence involves gathering data from publicly available sources like websites, social media, forums and public documents. This method allows an administrator to identify external threats and understand industry specific risk without requiring access to or revealing any proprietary or internal company information. It is the only option that strictly adheres to the constraint of not using proprietary data. So let's move to the next question. The next question is a system administrator is concerned about vulnerabilities within cloud computing instances. So which of the following is the most important for the administrator to consider when architecting a cloud computing environment? Option A, SQL injection. Option B, TOC, TOU. Option C, VM escape. Option D, tokenization. And option E, password spraying. And the correct answer for this question is VM escape means virtual machine escape. So let's check the explanation. So VM escape, virtual machine escape is the most critical vulnerability to consider when architecting a cloud computing environment, especially multi-talent owns where multiple virtual machines share the same physical host. This is a foundational security concern because a successful escape allows an attacker to break out their isolated VM and gain unauthorized access to the underlying hypervisor on other VMs on the same host, compromising the isolation that could that cloud computing relies on. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option C, virtual machine escape. So let's move to the next question. The next question is a database administrator is updating the company's SQL database which stores credit card information for pending purchases. So which of the following is the best method to secure the data against a potential breach? Option A, hashing. Option B, obfuscations. Option C, tokenization. And option D, masking. And the correct answer for this question is option C, tokenization. So let's check the explanation. 
So tokenization is considered the best method for securing sensitive data like credit card information in a database because it replaces the actual sensitive data with a unique non-sensitive identifier called a token. The actual credit card information is stored in a separate secure system or vault often managed by a third party payment processor which has stringent security controls. The tokens themselves have no instincting values or meanings rendering them useless to an attacker if the main database is breached. The original data can only be retrieved by an authorized system with access to the secure tokenization system. So let's move to the next question. The next question is which of the following is a benefit of vendor diversity? Option A patch availability, option B zero day resiliency, option C secure configuration guide applicability, option D load balancing. And the correct answer for this question is option P zero day resiliency. So let's check the explanation. So vendor diversity involves using products and services from multiple vendors rather than relying on a single source. The primary security benefits is that if a specific vulnerability such as a zero day exploit affects one vendor's product systems from other vendors may remain unaffected. This approach prevents a single point of failure and minimizes the risk of an entire infrastructure being compromised by a single exploit thus improving overall system resiliency to zero day attacks. So let's move to the next question. The next question is an employee use a company's billing system to issue fraudulent checks. The administrator is looking for evidence of other occurrences of this activity. So which of the following should the administrator examine? Option A application logs. Option B vulnerability scanner logs. Option C IDS slash IPS logs. Option D, firewall logs. And the correct answer for this question is option A, application logs. So let's check the explanation. So application logs records details activities within a specific software, such as the billing system in this case. They contain information about user actions, transactions, timestamps, and system responses. Since the fraudulent activity was conducted using the billing system itself, these logs are the most direct source of evidence to identify other similar occurrences, detect patterns, and trace the sequence of events leading to each fraudulent transaction. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, an organization is looking to optimize its environment and reduce the number of patches necessary for operating systems. So which of the following will best help to achieve this objective? Option A, microservices. Option B, virtualization. Option C, real-time operating system. Option D, containers. And the correct answer for this question is option D, containers. So let's check the explanation. So containers package an application with only the necessary libraries and dependencies, abstracting them from the underlying host operating system. Because multiple containers share a single host OS kernel, the number of actual OS instances that need to be managed and patched is significantly reduced compared to running a full OS for each application. The result is a smaller attack surface for the host OS and streamlines the patch management process for the organization. So let's move to the next question. The next question is which of the following tasks is typically included in the BI process? Option A, estimating the recovery time of systems. Option B, identify the communication strategy. Option C, evaluating the risk management plan. Option D, establishing the backup and recovery procedures. Option E, developing the incident response plan. And the correct answer for this question is option A, estimating the recovery time of systems. So let's check the explanation. So estimating the recovery time of systems, specifically the recovery time objectives or RTO is a, funda is a fundamental task of the business impact analysis BI. The BI process identifies critical business functions and accesses the potential impact of disruptions, which include determining how long the organizations can operate without a particular system or function. So let's move to the next question. The next question is which of the following is a risk of conducting a vulnerability assessment? Option A, a disruption of business operations. Option B, unauthorized access to the system. Option C, reports of false positives. Option D, finding security gaps in the system. And the correct answer for this question is a disruption of business 
operations. So let's check the explanation. Conducting a vulnerability assessment involves actively scanning and probing systems for securely weakness. This process basically is basically especially if the SADs are aggressive or improperly configured can consume significant system resources degrade network performance or even cause system crashes or service interruptions this potential impact on the availability or performance of critical business services is a real risk which is why vulnerability assessment are often scheduled during off-peak hours or in a controlled test environment to minimize operational disruption so that's why the correct answer for this question is option A, a disruption of business operations. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, which of the following techniques would attract the attention of a malicious attacker in an insider trade scenario? Option A, creating a false text file in a slash doc slash salaries. Option B, setting weak passwords in slash etc slash shadow. Option C, scheduling vulnerable jobs in slash etc slash contact. Option D, adding a fake account slash etc slash password. And the correct answer for this question is option A, creating a false text files in slash doc slash salaries. So let's check the explanation. This technique describes creating a honey file which is decoy file designated to attract the attention of malicious insider looking for sensitive information, example salaries data. The file itself is a fake and contains no real sensitive data. If an insider attempts to access or interact with this file, that action is logged and can trigger an alert to security personnel, allowing the organization to monitor and detect malicious activity without compromising actual data. So I hope you are enjoying this video and this part has been completed. So study hard, good luck and thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe the channel to see more video like this. I will upload next part shortly. Thanks for watching. Thank you.